And now, Lifestyles Unlimited presents the Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Over the next hour, we unfold your map to financial freedom. You'll learn how to retire through investing in single family and multifamily real estate. You'll learn how to create cash flow and build wealth so you can have the time and money to live the lifestyle you want. Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. I'm Mike Harrison, and as always, yes, we are working on your financial freedom. It's my privilege to join you today. So we talk a lot about passive income on this show. It's actually what we teach here at Lifestyles Unlimited, how to create passive income in your life. And if you're a new listener, passive income essentially is how we free ourselves financially. Now, if you've never really heard or understand passive income, don't blame yourself. I was in my early 40s until I was able to take essentially a financial education piece and learn about passive income. Shocking, right? But this is just not taught in schools. Personally, I think it should be taught on the elementary level, the high school level, middle school level, and on the college level. It, it should be taught. Um, call me a conspiracy theorist. I think there's some reasons why it's not taught, and you'll see that I, as we go through it. Uh, I think that, you know, passive income, there's just so many advantages, and you're about to hear those compared to w in, W-2 income, but it creates a free and independent person. If you have passive income and you can do what you want, when you want, where you want, with whomever you want, you are a free person. You are making your own decisions. You are dependent upon no one. However, W-2 income, most people live check to check. That sounds like dependency to me. So there's actually three types of income recognized by the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service, right? The official money collection wing of the United States government. They recognize three types of income. I'm not making up the three types of income. They're the ones that say there are three types of income and we will tax them accordingly. And this is how we will do it. So the first type of income is what we call W-2 income. That's active income. That's where you're trading work, blood, sweat, tears, and time, hours, right, for a paycheck. Why do they call it W-2 income? Well, W-2 is the form that your employer sends to the IRS. They also send you a copy and they say, here's how much we paid you. We paid you $58,492.67. And we withheld this much federal tax. And then it's calculated, right? Either they withheld too much or not enough. And you settle up with the IRS later based on whatever tax category you're in. But W-2 income, again, that's the form that the IRS reports to the government. Guess what? W-2 income is the income that... And here's more of that conspiracy. We're all conditioned from a very young age that that's how you make money, right? You essentially go get a job and you get paid to do a job. Even as a kid, I was knocking on doors and mowing lawns. That was a job. I was drumming up some money, odds and ends here and there. When I worked at the grocery store at, at 15, 16 years old, that was a job. That's what we wanted. That's how you made money. If you wanted to go hang out with your friends at the mall and go to the movies and buy a cool pair of tennis shoes, well, you had to have a job to earn that money. No one said, well, Mike, if you had passive income, you could have done all that. And we'll get into that in a moment. But W-2 income, it's the one that we're taught from a very young age and also ding, ding, just happens to be the most taxed of all types of income. Hmm, no wonder they teach everybody that that's what you need to do is go to school, get good grades, and get that job. So how is it taxed? Well, right off the bat, I think we're all familiar with federal income tax. And, and it's uh, there's levels, right? The more you make, uh, the more you pay as a percentage of your income. So that comes out of it right off the top. Then there's Medicare tax, okay? And most people don't realize this, but the tax rate on Medicare tax, and this is supposed to be your medical when you're older, is taxed at 2.9% of what you earn. It, it's a flat tax on all compensation. I bet 
most of you don't realize, well, some of you do, but a lot of you out there don't realize that you're paying half of that. You're paying 1.45% and your employer is paying the other 1.45%, okay? So whatever portion you see on your W-2 income, your employer sent that exact same amount on your behalf to Washington, D.C., right? It's a lot of money. What else? Social Security tax, okay? So we're still on W-2 income, and I just named the third tax. Social Security tax is 12.4% of all your compensation. So if you made hundred grand, 12400 you're only paying half of that. You're paying 6.2%. So 6200 is getting pulled out of your check. So there's more, right? Less take home for you. And again, your employer is paying an equal amount. I mean, billions and trillions of dollars is all going to these government agencies. We're not done taxing. Depending on where you live, there may be a state income tax. You may have a two, three, four, five, six. If you're in California, I think it's 12 or 13 percent to the state. Again, pulling it out of all your earnings, reducing that take home. Are we done taxing W-2 income? No. Believe it or not, there are city income tax. Now, I'm not talking about sales tax, okay? Sales tax is different. It's a different, conversa- it's a different conversation. I'm talking about your W-2 income, your earnings. There are cities that have federal, uh, uh, or excuse me, income taxes based on your take home. Okay, New York City is one of them. That's the, not the only one. So they're taking a little hit because of where you live geographically. So that is your income tax. It is the most taxed. Uh, w-2 income is the most taxed of all incomes. Uh, the second type is portfolio income. Now. That income is taught to people. That's essentially how you retire, right? The 401k, the IRA, the stocks, the bonds. Portfolio income is not subject to the Social Security or Medicare taxes. Now, I will tell you, it is subject to something called capital gains, right? Now, I'll also tell you this. um, When you save up in these retirement vehicles, right, 401k, IRA, and then when you retire and you pull money out of those, a lot of people don't realize this, that will be taxed at your ordinary income rate, at your federal income rate. So if you're going to pull, I believe uh, the highest rate is what, 140000 a year. If you're going to pull more than 140 on an annual, you'll be paying that, that highest rate of income tax. So it'll be treated as such, as income, right? Now, the third type of income, the greatest type of income there is, Again, the income that I never even knew existed is not taught in school at any level. It's called passive income. Now, what is passive income? It's earnings derived from rental property, right? Or a limited partnership. Um, But the main thing is it's an enterprise in which a person is not actively involved. That's the rules, okay? That, hey, I like that rule. And so it's essentially, it's an investment, right? You're a limited partnership or if you own a rent house. If you own 20 rent houses, you have 20 different sources of passive income. It's an enterprise to which now you may be managing or what have you, but it's still considered passive income once you get, uh, once you get through everything and uh, settle your taxes. But you may have a, a property manager, right? You may be a partner in an apartment community where a hundred of you went in and you put money in and you bought the apartment community, the lead investors running it, they've got a management team in place and you're not actively involved, right? You're just getting that check quarterly. So passive income is essentially income. You're not actively involved. People like to say that uh, we earn passive income in our sleep, um, which, which we do. But Here's the other positive of that, right? You're not involved. How great is that? You mean I'm going to get a check in three months and then another check and another check and another check? Yeah, and and I don't have to be involved? Okay, I'm interested. Now, let me tell you this. It is the least taxed of all types of income, the least taxed. So why wouldn't this be a source of income that everybody gravitates for, right? Shouldn't they be teaching us this when we're 10 years old? Hey, you want as much passive income in your life as you can get. That way you can live free. You can do what you want, when you want, wherever you want, with whomever you want, 
on your terms, depending on how much that passive income is coming in. Yes, that should be taught to most people, to everybody. But I'm going to tell you, most people, they only, they only know of one type of income, W-2 income. Um, and that's, that's just the situation in this country. It's uh, passive income. I don't want to say it's a secret, but it's just not a voice that's out there. I mean, you're not going to pick up the paper and in the financial business section, you're going to see a column on creating passive income. I've never seen that. Now, let's change gears a little bit. Warren Buffett. How many of you out there have heard of Warren Buffett? B-U-F-F-E-T. If you haven't, you're probably kind of young. That's okay. And, and I appreciate you listening to the show. But he might be the single greatest investor of all time. Okay. And when I say investor, yes, he's involved in stocks, bonds, stock market, the whole nine yards. He owns companies, but he also owns a lot of rental property. Okay. He owns a ton of rental property. He owns a ton of real estate. What did he say about income sources? Well, he's very famous for saying never depend on a single source of income. So again, if you have that one job, that's a single source of income. You're very vulnerable, very vulnerable. If that job ends, your single source of income is gone, right? Um, but if you have a job, five rental properties, and you're a passive investor in another 10 apartment communities, well, that's 16 sources of income. I think you might be doing what Warren Buffett's talking about. What else did he say? He said, the key to staying wealthy is reducing the vulnerability of your income to economic pressures. The more sources, the merrier. So again, if you only have that single source, you are vulnerable to that source going away or even economic pressures that's out there, right? Uh, inflation, let's take inflation. You have a job and they're paying you 50,000 a year and all of a sudden gas is $4 a gallon, right? And that just kind of almost happens it, it happens a lot more now, but just the price of gasoline, um, that's not 8% inflation. In, in many places, the price of gas doubled. And if you rely on, uh, if, if let's say you're a mechanic by trade or uh, own an HVAC business or you're a plumber or a roofer, you're driving a lot. And so that is, he's talking about the key uh, is avoiding those economic pressures. But again, if that's what you do, but you have another five rental properties and another 10 investments in apartment communities as a passive investor, then you are reducing your vulnerability to these sort of pressures. So basically he said, never rely on a single source of income. So that's, that's so important. If we're listening to the greatest investor of all time, I think we should take his advice and not rely on a single source of income. I think we should essentially buy our life back one piece at a time. And that's what Lifestyles Unlimited was created to do, was to teach people how to buy your life back one piece at a time. We actually call that chunking. So let's say you have a W-2 job, you're listening to me now, you're like, Mike, I do wanna create some passive income in my life. And you get with us, we teach you how to buy that first rental property. That's another two, three, $400 a month. Would that help you? And then you buy that second rental property. Again, that's another, uh, on top of that, two, three, four. Now you're making five, six, or $700 a month. And then you work your way up to those 10 properties. Would an extra two grand change your life? Would an extra three grand change your life? Would that make a difference in how your life, uh, just on a daily basis, would that make a difference in how you sleep? Would that make a difference in maybe your attitude for the day? You bet it would. Passive income will make a ton of differences in your life. And when we come back, I'm going to review some benefits of passive income that maybe many of you have never thought of. My name is Mike Harrison. We'll be right back with the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Got questions? Call Lifestyles Unlimited at 855-497-4335. The Real Estate Investor Radio Show continues next. There is a dream killer here somewhere today. 
you're going to run into somebody that's going to tell you this stuff doesn't work. Like Vinette said, it's a scam. This is probably a multi-level marketing program. Somebody is going to tell you it doesn't work because you're the wrong race, the wrong age, the wrong sex, the wrong sexual preference, the something or other. And this is all set up so rich people can be successful and all you poor people can't. And if you believe that, they've won. But if you don't, you win. Don't believe the dream killers? Start winning today with a Lifestyles Unlimited free workshop. Get the knowledge you need to replace your income in two to five years and then find out how to take action. Register for the free online workshop at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Creating the lifestyle you've always wanted. You're hearing Lifestyles Unlimited's Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome back to the show. I'm Mike Harrison, talking all about passive income today. It's a lot more than most people think it is. They look at passive income once they learn about A, it's not taught everywhere. And then once you finally learn about it, they go, okay, that, that's a way that we can buy our life back one piece at a time. Uh, rent house two, three, four hundred dollars a month, and we stack those on top of one another, and we can maybe stack some passive apartment investings on top of one another. But I'm here to tell you, it does so much more than just give you that three, four, five hundred, five thousand, ten thousand dollars a month. It does. Number one, I'll just I'll give you an easy one right here. It will make your life less stressful. It will. It will actually reduce that burden. Personally, I sleep better today than I did 10, 15 years ago. I was always worried about the future. I was worried about our retirement. I was worried about what if we had one of those life gets in the way financial hiccups where there's a sudden five, $5,000 bill that comes in that month or the AC goes out or the car breaks down. I don't worry about that kind of stuff now. Um, obviously, it can retire you. That's what we teach you here when your passive income meets or exceeds your monthly obligations, financial obligations, let's say you have 3500 a month in financial obligations, and you work on it, and you work on it, and you work on it, and your passive income is now $3,600 a month, well, do you have to go to work? Uh, a lot of us don't. We keep working. A lot of us do retire, but let me tell you what, the sun looks different in the morning. Uh, the air feels different outside. The drive is different. So, yes, you can retire yourself with passive income. With passive income comes a, a peace of mind. It's knowing that the investments that you have put in place, that there is cash flow coming in, coming in down the road as the investments grow, as they mature, uh, the ones that are paying dividends. You get to look at those, and typically the – uh, as the property begins paying dividends, then the property becomes more valuable and it just it continues on. It gives you that peace of mind of having essentially a sense of the future and knowing that everything's going to be OK. I will tell you this, uh, if you have a significant other in your life, um, it will improve your relationship with that person tenfold. And I, I don't think I need to remind folks out there that the top, uh, one of the top three reasons for divorce in the United States is financial, okay? If you're able to essentially get that peace of mind because that financial part is in your life, then you can work on your relationship. Your relationship will get better. There's not going to be the money fights that are out there. And again, that's a top three reason, sadly, for divorce here in the United States is finances. I'll give you another one. Uh, most people don't think of this. Uh, I'll just call it rescuing you from your 401k. Um, I used to sacrifice and really did my best 15 to 20 percent of my check uh, monthly. Um, typically it was 20. A lot of times it was greater than that. If I got a bonus, I'd put a big chunk of that uh, into the retirement fund. Um, I don't do that anymore. I don't. I, I don't have that. 15 to 20 piece hanging over me 
my future, my retirement is taken care of because I've invested in these properties. And what happens is these properties will go full cycle and they will either refinance or sell. And then I take that portion. So let's say I invested 50 and the property pays so many dividends and I'm not counting the dividends right now. We hold it for four years, right? Dividend every quarter, boom, 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 boom. We get to the end of that four year cycle and we decide as a group to sell they give me my initial fifty thousand dollar investment back and then they give me another fifty another seventy five another hundred on top of it do i take that and go to tahiti no but uh that would be fun <laughs> but i'm not i'm gonna put that now hundred thousand hundred and fifty thousand whatever it is into more investments okay so that's how i'm essentially growing my wealth my nest egg i'm not having to take 15 or 20 of, of everything i bring home and sacrifice and feed that to my retirement fund so you can rescue you from that uh, next um, passive income will allow you to give more right you have this additional income in your life you have this peace of mind you've got that financial future essentially locked in and let's say you go to a, a nice restaurant and you're having a wonderful time and um, your waiter or waitress is really working their tail off and uh, just superior service and you know instead of the typical 20 or 25 percent of the tip why don't you leave them a hundred dollar bill why don't you you know do something along those lines give a little more to your church uh, invest a little more in your charity right you have more so you can give more it's a good feeling um, our neighbors, their kids are graduating from uh, high school, right? They're about to start that next step in their life. Well, you get the graduation card and you get a nice check from the Harrisons. Good job. Congratulations. We love you. It was fun. Uh, it's, it's fun watching you grow and, and mature and enjoy your summer here and, and go live your life. Go do great things, right? So you can give more. And, and this one hits close to home. I will tell you, Passive income is insurance against uh, financial calamities. And um, I'll just explain a little bit here. Um, recently, I've had some unexpected medical issues, and I'm going to get a little personal. Um, I've missed some networking events and some case studies at Lifestyles Unlimited. I've, I've had to do some physical rehab. I'm about 95% recovered. I've got some continuous rehab, but... Uh, I had a vicious, vicious skiing accident at a high rate of speed, um, and I was being a knucklehead. I've been skiing for 40 years, and, and I'm not 22 anymore, and I should have known better. Um, you know it's a bad ski accident when you come to, and they're cutting your clothes off on the side of a mountain, and it's 20 degrees outside. Uh, that's what I came to. I had a dislocated shoulder. Um, I was bleeding. They thought I was bleeding internally. Um, ended up having some uh, some nerve issues, some lung issues. Obviously, the blown out shoulder. Uh, my face was going numb for randomly for a few weeks afterwards. Uh, it's all fixed now. But where I'm going is not to get into uh, my foolishness um, that I can't ski the way I used to. Unfortunately, uh, what happens when you earn a trip in? A ambulance which I've never ridden in one before um, very painful experience uh, although the the paramedics were fantastic individuals and took great care of me uh, you get that trip to the ER and again just wonderful professional staff took good care of me um, but with an ambulance ride and with an emergency room stay uh, well you're going to get the check at the end of the day the bill is due but Am I worried about it? Am I concerned? No, because I have this passive income supplement in my life. Back to the beginning, passive income is one of those three types of income that's identified uh, by the IRS. Um, the way it works with us in a single family house, I've mentioned those five different ways we make money, and these are all essentially part of this passive income. Um, there's the cash flow. And that comes essentially, that's what's left over after you pay the principal, the interest, the taxes, and the insurance. So if all that adds up to $1,200 a month and you're renting your property for $1,500 a month, then you have that $300 cash flow. Again, we're going to depreciate that. And so we can get the tax advantages and that cash flow, if we set it up right, is going to be tax-free. Isn't that nice? 
Now, there's mortgage pay down. Obviously, they're going to pay you. They're going to pay the rent, and then you're going to pay the principal to the mortgage company. And you get a little bonus when you do that. A certain part goes to principal. A certain part goes to our interest. There's another one, $200 a month. Equity capture. We buy distressed properties. If you missed my show last week with Nicole, you'll want to go back and, and pick it up. She's a, a single-family mentor here in Dallas. We talk a lot about equity capture. Um, so you can you can essentially double your money with that equity capture upon purchase. Uh, so we have that equity capture. And then there's the natural appreciation, right? Each year, uh, that property is going to be worth more, right? Imagine a uh, million dollars worth of real estate. And you're and I, and I know immediately you're going, Mike, a million, I don't have a million dollars. No, you can get a million dollars worth of real estate with $200,000 because we use leverage. But guess what? The appreciation is going to be on the, mil, on the million, not on the 200000 So if you have 5% natural appreciation, that's 5% of a million. That's $50,000. It's not 5% of what you brought to the table. Appreciation is the secret millionaire maker. Okay, so that's the that's the five ways um, that that we do that. Now, I don't want you to be upset if you were not aware of passive income. It was definitely something that was not taught to me. Um, it wasn't taught to me by my parents. And I'll just go into something real quick. Um, our parents love us. Okay, and I'm going to throw that out there. I know there's um, some issues that are the exception, not the norm. But I'm going to say as a whole, our parents love us. But then I'm going to say, or do they? Because what they teach us isn't always the best for us. My dad was a bond investor. My mom was very frugal. She was a saver. She was into the company stock, CDs, money market. She came out ahead of him when they both passed in their, their 80s. But neither were millionaires, neither of them. But I want to I want to look at my dad, my father. He was a very successful engineer in the space industry. In fact, he was the primary designer of the engine on the Saturn V that took man to moon, Huntsville, Alabama, early 70s. From there, he went on and he built Titan missiles. His net worth, when he passed away, this included a paid-for house on two beautiful acres overlooking a state park in Utah, gorgeous, was about $700,000. And he was 88. And so I look at this and I go... How does this man, incredibly gifted, degree in aeronautical engineering, three and a half years, that's before calculators. He's a geology expert of the Southwest United States, a historian, extensive library. I mean, Korean War, USMC officer, very smart guy in the space industry. Why is it that my net worth is multiples greater than his? Why? Is it because I'm smarter? No, not even close. I mean, my father could do calculus on a dinner napkin. He could build anything. He had a patent. He had a patent for a launch pad that he designed that could launch the United States Miniman missile, the Chinese Silkworm missile, and the French Exocet, any of the three delivery vehicles. You could launch from the same launch pad. He had that patent. He designed it. I'm not smarter than my dad was, okay? But you know what I know? I know how to follow directions. I know how to ask people questions. I know how to network and ask people, hey, is this real estate investing thing work? What do you think? How long have you been doing it? What's uh, your strategy? What are you into? And I knew when I saw something that was as powerful as real estate investing, I knew that at that moment, I needed to make the change and it made all the difference in the world. You can do the same, my friends. I want you to remember your tomorrow is going to be based on your decisions today. And it's not the money. It's the lifestyle. Make it a great day. We'll see you next week. The information and opinions you hear on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show are those of the hosts, guests, and callers. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.